8.3 is compound interest present value. So a little bit of a continuation from what we were doing with compound interest in 8.2. Your teacher might even have done both of these lessons together because they're, they're pretty much the same thing. Only this time you're looking for a present value. So again, this is a type of question where you need to know your grammar to know what's the difference between a present and a future value. So present value is the amount that needs to be invested now present, right? To have a certain amount in the future. So all we're doing is taking our equation that you already know, A equals P times 1 plus I to the N, and solving for P. So all you have to do is divide both sides by 1 plus I to the N here, and you end up with the equation on the other side. So now we can solve for the present value, knowing the future value, the interest rate, and the number of payments. Don't forget to match these together. So the question, first one says, what principle must be invested today, so present value today, to have $10,000 in six years? So this is my amount in the future, in six years. So my A is going to be 10,000. Um, keep reading though, the present interest rate is 5% per annum compounded monthly. So I need to adjust my I because it's not annually, it's monthly. So I have 5%. That's going to be 0 0.05 as a decimal. This is per annum. But I want it monthly. So that's 0 0.05 divided by 12 per month. So that's my, that's my calculation for I and my N, so it's going to be six years monthly, so I have to do six times 12 to get 72 for my N value. Very important, make sure you spend two seconds to make yourself this little box of information before you start plugging into your, your equation. So P equals A, that's 10,000, divided by, one plus the decimal. So I'm just going to write it like this because you can do this as well in your calculator. You can do it all at once. So one plus this divided by 12. Make sure you put it in brackets. So again, to the power of 72. Now make sure when I do a calculation like this that, that you actually give it a try. Um, you know, try it on your calculator to make sure you're getting the same answer. So I would do, um, I would start in the denominator here and do 0 0.05 divided by 12. And that's going to give me my decimal. See, it's really ugly. And I'm going to add one to it. That gives me this. And I'm going to raise it to the power of 72. That gives me this for my denominator. So now I'm just going to say 10,000 i got enough zeros, divided by my previous answer. You can save yourself a lot of time if you learn the buttons on your calculator. And I get $7,412.80. $7,412.80. So that makes sense. Make sure after you've done a calculation, especially of word problems, that you see if it, does this make sense? Like if you got an answer that was bigger than 10,000, that wouldn't make any sense at all, right? So that's all you need to put in at 5% compounded monthly. Make sure you adjust things to the term, the time. Okay, next question. What is the present value of an investment that will be worth $13,500 in four years? Interest rate is 12% per annum compounded monthly. So that's 12. So we've got more 12s to work with here. I want it to be worth 13.5. So that's the amount in the future. The A value is your future amount. I'm trying to solve for the present value or the principal. The present value is the same thing. This means principal, right? The present value. That means what is it worth today? That's also your principal amount. So my I. This time is going to be 6%, so that's 0 0.06 per annum. 
and I need to adjust it for monthly. So 0 0.06 divided by 12 per month. And that divides nicely, right? Because 660 divided by 12 is 5, so that gives me 0 0.005. That's my decimal for my interest rate. And my N, let me just hold that here. N, I've got um, four years monthly. So four years times 12 is going to be 48. Okay, so now all I have to do is plug it into the calculator. P is... 13,500 and I'm dividing it by 1.005 1 1.005 to the power of 48 okay so I'm going to do that on the calculator for you so I have 13,500 divided by bracket 1.005 to the power of 48 and I get ten thousand six hundred and twenty five dollars and eighty three cents always round to two decimal places we're talking dollars and cents right so there you go now it's not too much else to teach you here but I want to do one of the word problems this is question 10 from page 499 and it says that Sally invests some money at 6% per annum compounded annually. After five years, she takes the principal and interest and reinvests it all at 7.2% per annum, compounded quarterly for six more years. Oh, Sally. At the end of this time, her investment is worth this amount. How much did Sally originally invest? So this is worth drawing yourself a little picture, right? So we have Sally... She puts some money in the bank for five years. Five years, 6%. And the 6% is compounded annually. So this is going to be annually, 6% for six, oh no, sorry, five years. For five years. After five years, she takes the amount here and she puts it all in the bank for six years six more years compounded quarterly at 7.2 percent so she got a better rate she swapped her money out was smart so quarterly and at the end of all this she had fourteen thousand seven hundred and eighty four dollars and fifty six cents so your job is to figure out how much she put in here well you can't figure that out unless you know what the present value is of this amount here and then, so you have two present value calculations to do. Okay, so you need two calculations. Calculation one is going to be this. And this one's going to be my second one to bring it back to the, the present value. So we're going to do calculation one. So I want to know what the present value is of an amount 1 plus i to the n. So it's it's the same calculation you did before. Remember the a equals p times 1 plus i to the n. Just rearrange the equation. And this time my a is going to be 14,784.56 and my i is 6% as a decimal 0.06 and my N was five years. So it's annually. I don't have to adjust that at all. So just put five. So I plug all this in. 14,784.56. And I'm going to divide it by 1.06 to the power of five. Okay. And if you do that. Sorry, I made a boo-boo here, didn't I? I'm doing it backwards. Ah! Okay, so it was 6%. Let's fix this up. It was 6% quarterly, 7.2% quarterly for six years. I'm doing part of two questions at the same time. Concentrate. 
So this was 7.2%. Sorry to make you waste your time watching this. Uh, 7.2 quarterly. So I have to divide this 0 0.072. That's per annum. And I'm going to divide it by 4. 0 0.018. Right. Okay. So that's my my I. And of course, I did it in ink. But you should never do your math in ink. Right. You to make mistakes. You can't erase them. Okay. So here's the amount. I'm going to divide it by 1.018, and my N is going to be six years, and it's quarterly. So I need an N of 24. Here now we're cooking with gas here. Okay, sorry about the mess. I don't like using calculators. I don't like using ink when I'm doing math. 784.56, and we're going to divide it by bracket 1.018 to the power of 24. Okay, so now I get $9,635.22. Now, let's take that back. So that's this amount back to here was $9,635.22. Okay, so that's calculation one. And calculation two, I'm going to do it in green ink, and I'm not going to make a mistake this time. So calculation two, I want the present value. And I'll write out the equation, 1 plus i to the n. And this time for this calculation, my amount is going to be nine six three five twenty two my i and this is the one where we don't have to change it zero point zero six and my n is going to be five so plug all these in nine six thirty five twenty two divided by one point zero six to the power of five so it's annual rate five years and if you do that calculation you should get something like if you left all the decimals in, like I did when I did it, you get this. So that's approximately $7,200. Okay, sorry about that mess along the way, but I thought I would do one right from your textbook because sometimes those are the ones that uh, cause you the most trouble. And that's the end of compound interest. The next thing we're going to do is annuities, and they will be fun. See you soon. Bye.